Modifiers can also be added to grease pencil objects, and much like with other object types, the list will be filtered to what works with grease pencil in particular. Grease pencil modifiers can be added to the overall object or can be isolated to only influence a single layer, a specific material, or only a specific material on a specific layer. Some modifiers, such as array, build, or armature, work in much the same way as they would for mesh and curve objects. If you want to see a detailed rundown of what some of these modifiers can do, I encourage you to take a look at my Modify course for a comprehensive guide. Modifiers like Doc Dash are specific to Grease Pencil. For example, here I have a rectangle which I've subdivided several times. I'll add the dot dash modifier to create a broken line effect. I can then add a tint modifier and change its color to something like a non-repro blue. In this way I can influence the color non-destructively without having to constantly change the attribute with vertex paint or check to see what the adjustments tint color is in the object properties. Modifiers are a powerful way to not only alter how a grease pencil object looks, but they can also be used to help create. Let's add a mirror modifier to this blank grease pencil object. I've modified the default stroke object slightly by renaming the two default layers to symmetrical and asymmetrical. I've also added an empty object to the scene. In my mirror modifier properties, I'll set the influence to the symmetrical layer, leave the axis set to X, and eyedropper select the empty object. Now I'll begin to sketch out a rough figure on the symmetrical layer. Once I'm happy with the basic shape, I'll select the asymmetrical layer and begin to sketch extra details. If I continue to work observing the x-axis in relation to this empty, I can quickly bash out a few thumbnails in this way. And when I'm happy with them, I can apply the mirror modifier, merge the layers, and edit the layout of the thumbnails for presentation. I encourage you to experiment with modifiers and come up with your own ways of using them. Blender has had some sort of edge or contour detection filter from the early days. Once it was edges, then freestyle came along. And thanks to the efforts of developers like Yiming Wu and his experimental branch render engine LANPR, we now have the line art modifier as part of Grease Pencil. I have here a stylized building model. There are some area lamps added to the scene, as well as a camera that we're looking through. The line art modifier requires something to act as a camera in order to project the lines. There are a couple of ways you can add a line art modifier, but the easiest way would be in scene. I'll hit Shift A, then select New Grease Pencil Object and one of the three line art modifier options. It really doesn't matter which you select as these objects can then be edited in the modifier properties. But to begin with, let's select the scene object as this is the simplest to understand. Once added, we can adjust the settings in the modifier properties tab. There are a lot of options. So for this demonstration, I'll just go over some of the most important ones. As you can already tell from the type of line art grease pencil object that we added, the source type tells line art what to look for. If it's set to scene, this will take into account everything in the scene which is visible through the target camera. But you can isolate the source to a collection of objects or even a single object. The layer and material 
are generated upon adding the line art modifier. And because this is a grease pencil object, you can add layers and materials and modify them at any time. The line thickness and opacity controls will adjust those parameters across all the lines generated dependent on the next few sections. The most important, of course, is edge types. Now, the defaults are set for the most common scenarios. These are generally easy to modify. For example, adding edge marks to an object comes in handy when you want to add some specific details by marking edges on your meshes, freestyle edges, for example. One feature which is especially fun is using a light object to filter the line art based on illumination filtering. If I select this lamp to act as the light object, the illumination filtering setting now becomes available as an option under edge types. The lines will only be applied to either what is illuminated by the lamp or the shaded areas occluded from the lamp. You can also have the illuminated areas be drawn as enclosed shapes. Overall, it is a really cool way to add line work to a scene, but it is when it's used in combination with several other techniques that you can see how it can save you a lot of time. Effects can also be added, but it will affect all the layers and materials on that grease pencil object. Effects are also only visible when using rendered view. Some are pretty simple. Pixelate, for instance, only has a couple of settings and is great for creating 8-bit or 16-bit effects. Ones like Shadow can be tricky, but provided you stick to simple uses, it's actually pretty powerful. There are options to rotate the shadow based on an object, blur the shadow, or even create some waves. Similarly, the rim effect provides an easy way to add rim lighting. But if it's pushed too far or used on an object which is more complex, you can see that this is using the object's own alpha as a mask, and you can end up with some undesired areas which are backlit. Blur can be added as a straightforward effect in which you can control the samples and size of the blur. But you can also use the camera's depth of field to blur the object. But a couple of things have to be observed. The depth of field only works in relation to the grease pencil's own object origin. So for example, if you have several instances because you've added an array modifier and they're spread out over Z space, they will all blur as if they existed at that object's origin in relation to the camera's plane. However, if you have several grease pencil objects scattered about your scene, this works great if they all have the blur effect on them and it's set to depth of field. Much like modifiers, effects can stack, and the order in which an effect is placed in that stack will have an impact on how each functions. Unlike modifiers, however, effects cannot be applied to the grease pencil object. Overall, effects are a great way to enhance and bring to life your illustrations and animations when working in Grease Pencil.